All the way up to So back again at Pete's on a Thursday evening. Yesterday evening wasn't any good. It's still uh, super cold here in the UK. It's uh, way colder than, than normal Why? for December. So uh, John is not with us. He is feeling uh, pretty under the weather all week. So uh, he bowed out, but that's fine. You know, take care of yourself. And uh, we're just gonna keep pressing on with a lot of little stuff on Pete's car. Yep. Um, so, in the interim, so what Pete did was he uh, he did the, the shifter spacer mod. Oh, he didn't tighten the bolts up though. No, not yet. Not tight, tight. <laughs> so, as they're still spinning, but get this going. We're gonna the switches that he ordered have not come in yet. They're probably coming from China or something. So we can't finish up the the, uh, the switch panel this week. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the console to it, push the wires up through, button this all up because we have a nice uh, radio delete panel. And this car interior is going to be looking more stock than it has in, uh, in many, many moons. So get that button up, get that look nice, and uh, that'll be kind of be done for the interior, what we're going to do. Oh, I also got to run the wires over from the methanol injection kit, the snow stuff so I'll get all the wires strung through the ashtray portion of the console and then we'll leave it there until the switches show up. All right what we're gonna tackle today in the engine compartment I think we're going to start doing some mock-up for uh, Pete's secret sauce here. <laughs> so the Holly sniper we're gonna pull this thing out set it on flow the wires out and see what we have to start doing because uh, we need to change the spring in the fuel pressure regulator we have one that's going to push up the fuel pressure to EFI levels because that came with this uh, this one that's why one of the reasons why we originally went for it is a bypass style fuel system compatible with carbureted or EFI so and then <laughs> and here we are going <laughs> EFI so and we got a hole there through the firewall to start running some wires for the fuel injection and start putting some sensors in, locking some fuel lines up. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be an interesting little day. Mm. We also have a uh, EFI fuel pump to retrofit. We do. So this is something I've had for a bunch of years. Didn't know if I'd ever use it. <laughs> a little bit big. <laughs> Should do the job, shouldn't yeah. it? I don't think you're going to run out of fuel. No. <laughs> so we have to take out the big uh, carbureted style fuel pump and yep. figure out how to get that thing on there to support this. Okay. Oh. Alrighty. It's the big one, 1200 horsepower. Rather really have too much than not enough. So, uh, well, yeah. let's pull this little uh, paper towel out of here and uh, see how this thing goes on. We have to get that catch can stuff breather out of the way for a bit. Just to work around it. Sorry to get condensation yeah. on, it's so cold. That's <laughs> where <laughs> so we've had the big heater on. So we gotta figure... Look at that, looks just like a carburetor. Look. We're gonna do these fuel lines. Where'd the other one go? Uh, oh, it's down here in the end of the Yeah, it needs to come over the top of that. Uh, yeah, that might be a problem with the uh, wipes in place. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We may have to add some lines or reroute some things. I would like to take this and move it back more Yeah. to get these and this stuff out of the way. A little, a little bit further removed from the exhaust, but uh, a little polishing. So, but that's what we're going to see here soon. Where's the hat at? Oh, oh it's still bolted on. <laughs> OK, 
kind of sort of. So, oh, this needs to probably move a little bit in here. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Lots of shiny aluminum. There it is. Though. So. All right, and one other thing we got going on is I brought my old tailpipes. These are the LMR style ones. So if we get time, I don't think we're going to get time today. I think it's a little too cold to be rolling around <laughs> on the ground. On the so we're going to take the old Flowmaster cat back off. We're going to mock up the tailpipes and we have flow tubes to install after we get the X pipe on there and just start measuring up for some uh, some different mufflers so that's gonna be an option we're gonna explore here soon but uh, a lot of good time so uh yeah let's get cracking get this heater turned back on yes <laughs> it's getting cold <laughs> okay here we go so efi spring we'll press the regulator we'll get to see the difference between the two Don't mm -hmm. forget that. There you go. The right one is car, left one is EFI. So very simply. Doing well here, one handed. There we go. And I'll bolt that down. Job done. So, looks kind of like an interior now. <laughs> we have our, our console insert back in, armrest elite. Radio delete plate, working ashtray, with switch panel. Right now it's, uh, we'll miss this with switches because we're waiting here, it's just mocked up and in place. So hopefully in a few weeks or whenever they come from China, you know, we'll get the rest of the switches. Yeah, this switch is bad, it's kind of like floating there. And uh, we'll get these in, wired up. We got all the wires routed and marked underneath. That's why the ashtray doesn't like to close right now because the wires are, you can see them down there, they're in the way. But yeah, it's going to be nice. So now that it's all cleaned up, this is back together. It's going to come back apart again once we start running the wires down for the holly. But yeah, we're looking good and we have to find the jam nut <laughs> with the shifter knob. So, but uh, probably use a new boot. But I don't think that's important to Pete right now. So he is there throwing sparks, rerouting the regulator. So we installed a fuel pressure sender unit. We'll have to wire that into the harness. And we're just going to tuck the regulator back in toward the shock tower in the corner a little bit. And unfortunately, where the fuel lines that we have are not going to work for what we got going on so we're going to have to get you know adapters for dash six coming out and into these little female or these male ends on the uh, sniper so all the little things that have to start getting uh, fidgeted around to make things work so. fettling it's called fettling <laughs> <laughs> no matter what you buy, you have to fettle to make it all work. So, yeah, we took the, the carbureted fuel pressure gauge, the mechanical one that was sitting there on the cowl off. Change the uh, spring. Yeah, Bit of video on that. Bring the regulator. Yeah, so we're, we're getting down to some nitty gritty. And we're going to have to you know, get the throttle cable bracket on. We probably don't need this vacuum line anymore because there's one on the back of the, uh, the throttle body. So just reroute it in a more appealing way to just get it off the, the top of the intake here. But, uh, yeah. And then we've got to redo all of this 
new mm -hmm. uh, new lines, new fittings. Now let's work on that a little bit more, and I'll bring it back in a second. Well, we're kind of wrapping it up, looking at things, just kind of putting parts on the car, figuring out the best way forward, and the more we think about it, the more work needs to get done. <laughs> so, this is a, the newest Holly Sniper system, and it has more inputs and outputs for to run different things like boost external boost controllers or nitrous or or inputs from whatever sensors you want than a standard sniper does but it doesn't tell you anything about them in the <laughs> instruction manual so it's got this eight pin harness here and all the the writing on the wires is very cloudy and muddy you can't really read it the connector is there, but uh, yeah, we're going to have to just go online and figure out what that's going to go to. Google's your friend. <laughs> we're thinking of ditching the BTM, sell it for some decent money, and just buy a regular brand new uh, 6A box. Because that's going to control all the ignition curves and timing and things like that. So we don't want anything extra like manual going into this box that's going to change or alter what we want it to actually be i mean we have to we routed the the vacuum line really nice to this box <laughs> and now we're just gonna have to get rid of it again because it's, like it's we don't need boost reference ignition uh, curves anymore or retards we don't need the, the starter saver so we have all those the switches that we were thinking about inside on the uh the console for the fuel pump and the fan and the, uh, the methanol but this can control it all <laughs> and so <laughs> we're like well if we're gonna really use it for what it was designed for we really probably should do that and have full total control that way we have data logging capabilities and uh, we're really maximizing all the full potential of this system so you got the fuel pressure regulator re 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 jiggered <laughs> so we realized that the, when the hood closes it's got to be level with the uh, the hinge here so it still may have to go down a bit more i'll have to anchor this part through the pinch wells we drill and have like a hole there we'll have to drill a hole over here we have to figure out what what lines we're going to need we're going to need some 90s probably a 45 go into the throttle body and we're gonna have to re hook this up somewhere I would kind of like it to be like offset over here I think that would be a little bit more compact but we're gonna have to come up with a bracket somewhere yeah so I mean plug one sensor in <laughs> We had, and it's wired as well. <laughs> so that's as far as we got. We got other than mounting it. We checked the, put the throttle cable on, checked it, make sure we got full throttle. We're going to need a different carburetor stud because the threads are different from the one we had. And so Pete's going to do a bit of machine work <laughs> on there. And this is the hat's got a pretty large hole here, so and this it fits the stud well. So we're thinking we're just going to. You know, take the threads down on this a bit and then uh, re-tap some in there. And then shorten it, because then that'll work just fine. But it's this, the little nitinoid stage is where we're at. And, uh, yeah, it's going to take a while. We'll get, we'll get through the winter anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I gotta, I'm hoping we'll be ready for the mobiles. <laughs> so uh, Pete's going to mock up the H-pipe. And then we have to figure out where we're going to weld in the, the oxygen sensor bung because he has, we, before this all happened, he bought a brand new Innovate dual oxygen sensor wideband gauge. Yeah. So it would be a shame more, to throw it away. Do, more dollars. <laughs> shame to, to reduce, to remove yeah, we, that capability. We're keep that just so I can see what's happening each side. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, just to make sure that both sides are going to be even. With the air fuel ratio and because this uh holly's only ever had one oxygen sensor but we got to mock it up and figure out where we're going to put that sec uh, new bung and being stainless i got the tig welder so i'll weld that up but yeah 
So anyway, it's gonna be, uh, I put this video up, maybe a garage update when I get back to the house, but uh, I'm going back to the world here in the States for a few weeks for the holidays. Going back over the pond. So avoiding all the uh, the fun old uh, UK train strikes and uh, I'll try to do a video. I'll record some stuff while I'm there, but uh, I won't be able to up input anything or upload anything until I get back in the new year. But uh, yeah, maybe John and Pete will get up to something while I'm gone, but uh, we'll have to see. But anyway, thanks for sticking along. If you listen to me ramble and uh, thanks for subscribing and I'll catch you guys soon.